all, welcome everybody to the new PPW garage. What a facility this is, huh? Um, so I wrote just a few remarks here. It'll be quick. I'm going to kind of, I'll be the MC. I'll move this thing along. I promise we'll be out of here very quickly. So the town of Hopkins was incorporated in 1715. I'm pretty sure the PPW that just got knocked down was built right around then. Uh, I can tell you that personally, I was responsible for at least three coats of paint on it. Uh, growing up, I, I got to work down here for quite a bit with some of the some of the old timers and, and uh, their memories that last me a lifetime. <clears throat> but this facility really is unbelievable. Uh, thanks to John Westerling, uh, Mike Manser, Eric Cardi, and all their staff for keeping the great tradition and uh, and pride of the DPW, the Highway Department, the Water Department, the Sewer Departments alive and well. Um, so. We got a lot of people that are going to be up here speaking about the DPW. I'm going to focus just a couple of minutes on who it's named after, uh, Tom McIntyre. So this is the first time that I've spoke publicly about Tom McIntyre um, for a while, and I don't know how it's going to go. So if I turn into a blubbering idiot, I apologize for that. He's up there, going to, he's going to laugh hysterically at me if I do. Um, <clears throat> outside of my wife and kids, I don't know a person closer to my heart than Tom. He was the best guy that I've ever met in my life. Um, taught me a lot of what it was like, like how you should be a dad, how you should be a husband, how you should be a father. Uh, Tom was the best. And if anyone disagrees with that, I'd be glad to have a discussion with you elsewhere, away from cameras. Uh, Tom was responsible for numerous projects in town. Uh, he did numerous projects for all the Eagle Scouts. There was never an Eagle Scout that came through that he didn't say yes to. Uh, you got planters in towns, the bells for the fire department, the granite sign for the fire department. Uh, you look out here, you got the, the, uh, the old steamroller that, that, uh, that he was responsible for restoring. Um, <clears throat> he was always ready to help the town out with a loader, a truck, a dozer, people. It didn't matter the date, the time, weather conditions, it just didn't matter. If you ever called Tommy, whether you were the town or a person or anyone, Tommy didn't know how to say no. Um, he put the lights on in the Little League field after the Parks and Rec said no. Um, I can remember very vividly, I've told this story a few times, I remember very vividly helping him out with that project allegedly. Um, and I can tell you that someone from the, from the uh, Parks and Rec department came down about two or three years later. I happened to be in the loom company, which was his office, and that person asked, remember when you asked about putting the lights up in the Little League field? And Tommy said, yeah. He goes, and we said no. And Tommy said, yeah. He's like, did you put those lights up? He's like, well, that would depend. Would that make you mad? And they said, yes. He goes, then, no, I did not. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to here to tell you, yes, he did. Um, we did. Um, EMC Park, where, where these guys all, they just, he, he was a, he gave all the equipment, a lot of the equipment, a lot of the staffing, a lot of the materials. There was nothing that he didn't do. So even though Tommy's not here, he's here with us just about in every aspect that we do in the, in the center of town. He put in the driveway to Fruit Street. Uh, one of my favorite things is he would, he would drive Santa around in the fire truck on the holiday stroll. Um, I have a lot more, but I don't, I don't want to get into a lot more because I don't know if I can st stand here. I'm out here, I'm looking at some of my best friends out there that, that we hung out together for a long time, and I'm seeing tears in their eyes, and I'm getting there with myself. So uh, I'm going to introduce uh, George Caldas. He's the executive pastor for the Faith Community, Faith Community Church. Uh, he's going to say a few words to you. Uh, we're really grateful to the town and to the services of the town, to uh, so many of you that collaborate with us to make our community a great place to live. And just want to say thank you for the opportunity to lead with this prayer. And I also like to think that I represent the whole faith community uh, in town that share their appreciation. Um, I know all the, the clergy, the Amman down the street, and we are indeed grateful. Um, for this really great community we live in and people like you all who are part of it. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for those who work behind the scenes, those unsung heroes who ensure our safety, 
Those who work diligently in all kinds of conditions to create a safe place for us. We are grateful for all our Hopkinton community services who collaborate for the well-being of our town and maintain an infrastructure that we too often take for granted. Bless, we ask this new facility in service to our neighborhoods and the safety of our people and the goodwill of our community. Amen. Thank you, George. Uh, so up next will be Claire Wright, the chair of our uh, Board of Selectmen, with a few remarks. Well, good morning, everybody. This is a very, very happy morning and a long overdue event. There are many thanks due. I would say first and foremost to the taxpayers of Hopkinton, who despite our many needs and many costs and rising taxes, saw fit to build us this beautiful facility, which as I said is, is long overdue. Um, we must be sure that we give thanks to those behind the scenes who actually built and made this facility possible. And those would be our engineers, Weston and Sampson, and Jeff Alberti, our contractor, G&R Construction, and the owner's project manager, John explained to me what this is, the owner's project manager was KD Associates, who were actually responsible for making this building a reality. Um, Fresh off my Goldilocks and the Three Bears gig at Center School, if anybody of, of you uh, were there, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I was reminded of another story to tell you as I thought about this event today. And there was a little town called Hopkinton with a little population of five or 6,000 people a long time ago. And they saw built to fit to build themselves a little concrete block building to house the highway department. And they lived happily, but not ever after, only for a long time. And then that little town began to grow and grow and grow. And then one day the town said, oh, we need a new fire station and we need a new police station. But they said to the little cement building, can you still plow our roads and salt our streets and sand our roads and keep us safe? And the little building said, I think I can. And then they said, we need a new high school. And they said to the little cement building, but can you still sweep the streets and clean up after all our storms? And the humble little cement building said, I think I can. And then they said, we need a new school. We're going to call it Hopkins. And they said to the humble little cement block building, but can you still clean the catch basins and keep our sidewalks clear so those children can get to Hopkins School? And the little cement building said, I think I can. And then they said, we need to build a senior center. And they said to this little building, but can you still bring us water, take care of our pipes and bring us sewer? And the little humble building said, I think I can. And then they said, we need a library, but can you give us a, a new water tank and mow our parks and pave our roads? And the little cement block building said, I think I can. And oh, let's put some of your stuff down on Fruit Street and let's pop up some plastic garages out back to shelter your equipment from the, from the storm. And can you still do all of the above? And the little building and all the staff inside said, I think I can. So fortunately, finally, that little cement block building that served us so long and the hard working staff inside have given way to this magnificent and long overdue state of the art structure. And that little building and all the people inside said, yes, the little building could, is <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Um, and so now, instead of in that little building, that staff can maintain our 110 miles of road, 76 miles of water main, 
40 miles of sewer line, 350 million gallons of water that is delivered, maintains 6,000 water meters, 668 fire hydrants, and 2,600 cat bases, and that's only the beginning. IDPW has done an amazing job with a less than amazing facility for many, many years. They have been uncomplaining, constant, dependable, and never has there been a degradation in services despite their lack of facilities. Compliments to the DPW for every storm event are, are routine. They are as predictable as the storms themselves. Today, this beautiful new facility will provide us with modern, efficient operations for our growing town, a clean, environmentally responsible storage, maintenance, and function area, proper storage and care for our valuable town equipment, and an ongoing return on investment for our taxpayers through all of the above mentioned and for constantly improving and expanding services. Your DPW impacts the lives of each and every one of our citizens on a daily basis through very re real quality of life services. This building, as you know, has been named the Thomas McIntyre Town Barn. Uh, as Mr. Ted Stone just eloquently explained, it memorializes a, an outstanding, much-loved town servant. And it's named the Town Barn, also harkening back to the days when our highway department was literally in a barn. And it shows how far that we've come. However, the level of service has never changed. So today, we are proud, honored, and pleased to officially open this new facility, and we look forward to many years of continued outstanding service. Selectman John Catino would like to also say a few words. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for coming. I just want to come up here and just thank you, the citizens of Hockington, for making this happen. Um, you know, we, we talk about, you know, with 9-11 and everything else, we, we talk about first responders, and we, th we think about the fire and police running into dire situations. And, and the Reverend's invocation really said it all, is that there, there's, there's a whole nother level of, of first responders. And without the DPW and, and the work that they do, it would make everybody else, all the other first responders' job that much more difficult. You know, they're, they're, the, they're the department that when everything's going well, nobody thinks about it. And, and to, to Claire's talk about the, the building, everything was going well, so nobody said, well, let's build them a new building. But I remember several years ago, um, just before I became a, a selectman, John invited me down, and right after a snowstorm, I brought a couple dozen pizzas with me to, to thank the guys for doing a great job plowing. And I said, where do we set up? And we were going into a room that was the locker room, it was the meeting room, it was the everything room, and it was about the size of that truck. And I just, I, I couldn't believe it. And so this was so this was so long in coming, but it's uh, so well deserved. And I just really want to again thank the citizens of Poppington for stay, sticking behind the uh, the DPW this time and giving them their, their their due. Thank you very very much. Thank you guys. So uh, so next we're going to call up Scott Richardson. He's the president of the Hopkinner Chamber of Commerce. Uh, he's going to give his congratulations. This is unbelievable. This is an unbelievable building. So welcome everybody. Uh, welcome Kathy, Tom, Kelly, Norman, Claire, Brendan, Eric, John, Dan, and all other town officials, whether you're currently a town official, have been, or will be in the future. I see a few young kids here. I think they'll probably be some town officials in the future. So it's my distinct 
and unique pleasure to be here today representing the Chamber of Commerce to acknowledge and congratulate the town on the opening of this Thomas McIntyre DPW barn. As has been said before, the town does not usually name public buildings after anyone. Um, in fact, I think this is one of the few times that it has. And since we're not currently building a fire station, it is only fitting and right that the town is elected to name this uh, fantastic new facility after Tommy. This recognizes a person who will always be remembered as a town treasure and truly one of Hopkinton's own sons. Tommy epitomized the ever helpful person. Sorry. That he always was. And so now whenever the DPW staff look at his name on this building, they will always be clear that they, like Tommy, are here to help the citizens of Hopkinton in any way they can. And we can, we can all draw inspiration from that as well. Again, congratulations on this new and well-named building that will serve the town for decades to come. Thanks. So, on a footnote, uh, this I do not have written down. Uh, the first time, I think, it was one of the first times I met Scott. Scott was in charge of the, uh, I think it was the Boy Scouts. So he called and said, we're doing a roast for Tommy. Uh, and we'd like you to come up and be the roast master at the country club. Would you be interested in doing that? I'm like, oh my God, would I be interested in doing that? <laughs> so I went online, I saw all the Comedy Central roasts, some clean, some not so clean. Uh, so I had a knockdown. Some people weren't going to be able to stay in their seats, they were going to fall out of them. So I got in there, recently started working, I think I was working at, a, at, at the prison as a nurse. And I look around, the first thing I say is, Jesus, this is like I'm at work. I'm looking out in the audience and I see a bunch of priests, a bunch of Boy Scout leaders referring to the prison, and there was nothing. <laughs> so Tommy looked at me, he goes, hey, Buck, I don't think this is that kind of roast. <laughs> and it wasn't. So I had to go to plan B. But, um, so we're going to do the ribbon cutting now. Um, we're going to have uh, Danny McIntyre, Tom's brother. Uh, come up, Claire Wright, Eric Carty, um, any representation from the from Tommy's family that we that would like to be in, we're going to come up and have that, and and um, go from there. Let's do it right in front of you, Danny, right here. Mike. So, you ready? He's going to give you the cue. Uh, on, uh, on zero. Three, <laughs> two, one. Reflections. We have Susan Nickel here from Senator Spilker's office that would like to say a couple of words to you as well. Thanks for this opportunity to bring congratulations from Senate President Karen Spilka. I'm sorry that she couldn't be here today. She wanted to send her regrets and send me to present the town with a citation. I think they should go to you, Mr. Kamala. Why don't you come on up? No? This is a state senate official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the town of Hopkinton in recognition of the joyous occasion of the new Department of Public Works facility ribbon cutting. And then a lot more stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, so now for the finale, Dan McIntyre, come on up and reflect. Well, thank you everyone for coming today. I want to echo Claire's words. This building has been a long time coming, and I know it's going to serve the town well for a long time in the future. 
and I appreciate the kind words for about my small involvement in this project, but there are a lot of other people that were involved over the years on this project as well. Really too many to name them all, but I see a couple of people here I want to recognize. Uh, Jeff Alberti from Weston and Sampson and the design team over there. We didn't give him much room to work with here, but you did a great job. You got a nice, good looking building and a functional building, so thank you. I, I look back over some of the old reports. Your name goes back on this 10, 12 years, so thanks for sticking with us. Anytime. Over that same period, I can't count how many DPW directors we went through. I, I think I'll have to you start using my toes on that one. But seven. <laughs> seven. We finally found one that stuck with us, John Westerling. Thanks for pushing this project through the finish line. John Palmer, and all the folks at McIntyre Loom, great job on the steamroller. Looks nice sitting out there. But at the end of the day, this building is just that. It's just a building. It's the people in the building that work here every day doing their job without any fanfare that keeps this town running. So I want to thank the staff of the water, sewer, and highway departments, past and present, for doing what they do and, and keeping us uh, this town running. So thank you. <clears throat> and finally, as much as I'm happy this building is done, <clears throat> it's bittersweet to see Tommy's name there. He should be standing right next to me. But on half of the entire McIntyre family, Kathy, Tommy Kelly. I want to thank the Board of Selectmen and the entire town for thinking so highly of Tommy that you gave me this honor. Thank you. dare challenge anybody to go out to any other naming of a town building in any other town and find the raw emotion and love that's falling out of everybody here right now. I would challenge you. And you won't be able to do it. And the reason is, is because you'll never, ever, ever come across a more genuine man, person than Tommy. So, um, I could go on for months, but let's, uh, let's cut this short. Uh, there's going to be a facility tour. There's some refreshments around. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for coming for the DPW. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming for Mac. Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's someone that uh, I think of him every day that it's sunny because it was a million degrees when I was working for him and I couldn't get an air conditioner in my loader. I think of it when it was snowing because I would go and I would be freezing and I didn't have a heater uh, and I loved every second of it and uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. So thank you for, thank everybody for coming out for the DPW and thank you for coming out for, for, uh, for Mac. So uh, they're gonna have a couple of tours here. Uh, John Westerling, thank you very much for letting me come up here and, uh, and John will lead the tour. All right, thank you. the uh, new DPW facility. Um, can you talk about when you guys moved in and how it was getting settled in and uh, kind of about the process of uh, getting this new facility and how long it took to get settled in here? 
Yeah, well, thanks, Tom. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the citizens of Hopkinton for uh, uh, voting for us to get this nice new facility here. Uh, definitely needed and very welcomed by all the staff down here. Uh, we're finally able to get all that equipment in under one roof. Uh, we were paying you know, a lot of money for some of the bigger trucks that had to sit outside over the years, so now it's nice to have this brand new facility uh, up and running. Uh, we moved in just a little bit, probably after the 1st of January. Uh, and it was right about the start we had of the cold snap, so we kind of trying to rush to get everything in here. Uh, took a few weeks to get everything organized. Once we got in, it was just still doing some uh, uh, minor work on the building here. Uh, so we've been working kind of around the contractors uh, while they're here. Uh, but just it, it's really worked out. Uh, this is a great central location, which is good for us too. It was nice being down on Fruit Street, but it's a lot further to respond when we got to go down to the east side of town. So it's nice to be back at a central location, uh, be able to, to operate out of a, a great brand new building here. Excellent. And um, I understand that you've been pretty busy lately. It's been, uh, we had a, a huge cold stretch where it was record setting uh, cold temperatures. Can you talk about uh, some of the things you guys had to deal with throughout the course of the winter so far? Yeah, sure, sure. As you know, I like to follow the weather. And uh, unfortunately, I don't like to follow it when I have to work in it. <laughs> and we had just a, a brutal stretch, which really started uh, just before Christmas time. And I think we had 10 straight days where the temperatures didn't come out of the 20s, which is the first time that that's happened, at least in the Boston area, in over 100 years. Uh, and what that did to, uh, uh, with us is unfortunately uh, when we get that uh, amount of cold, it just wreaks havoc with the water system. Many of the pipes in town here are old cast iron. And unfortunately, the, the water in the water tanks is at the t outside temperature. So we had a couple of days, I mean, we were below zero, uh, negative three, negative six. And when that cold water just rushes through and hits the cast iron pipe, it unfortunately causes the, uh, the mains to break. Uh, we had a stretch of, I think, three breaks in uh, four days. So the guys, uh, and not only that, but the guys were out dealing with uh, some of the snowstorms we had. So all of the water and sewer guys plow as well. It was a couple of the breaks where they had worked close to 20 something hours after being out all night plowing. We had a couple of breaks come in. Uh, so I, I can't say enough about the guys that work here. They do a great job. Uh, after all those hours, they uh, still came in and helped get the uh, water restored so that we get water back up and running for people. We've also had probably half a dozen or so uh, freeze ups that we've had to go into people's cellars. We have a machine that thaws the water line out. We have to run it through their pipe outside to the ground because the frost was just so thick from that uh, quick amount of cold that we had there, you know, right through up until about a week or so ago uh, where it finally broke. Uh, unfortunately, looking at the weather trends, it looks like uh, starting next weekend we're going to be not quite to that.